Let's go over what I've learned about how derivatives are used in machine learning during my journey into the world of AI. If you don't know the basics of derivatives, then you can't understand some of the most fundamental techniques of machine learning. This is the video I would have wanted when I first started learning. In order to fully understand how derivatives are used, we first need to understand the basics. So this video is going to be split into two parts. First, the intuition behind derivatives and related techniques, and second, applications of derivatives in machine learning. By the way, this is one of the items on my essential machine learning topics list that I'm building on my website. Be sure to check that out, link is in the description. All right, let's get started. Calculus is fundamental to machine learning, and derivatives are a technique within calculus. I'm not going to go too deep into the math, because I don't think that's essential for you to get started in machine learning. If you are interested in that, I would recommend checking out Khan Academy. Or if you'd like me to make a video, let me know in the comments section down below. We're going to cover derivatives, partial derivatives, gradients, the chain rule, and optimization. So let's get started with derivatives. The fundamental main idea behind derivatives is that they are the instantaneous rate of change at a point in a function. So let's break down what that means. Let's say we have a function y equals f of x. The formula for the derivative dy dx or f prime of x, this is just the notation for the derivative of the function f of x, is equal to the limit as the change of x goes to zero of f of x minus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. So this might look like a scary formula. So in order to break it down, we need to know two things, the formula for the slope of a line and a graph to visualize what's going on. You may remember from your math classes that this is the equation for the slope. M is equal to rise over run, which is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now right away you can start to see something interesting. This looks a lot like this and this looks a lot like this. We know that the slope is calculated by looking at two different points, let's say this one and this one, and then making a line through it which looks like this. So that's basically what a derivative is doing. And then the distance between these two points is delta x. What the derivative is saying is that we're going to look at this equation as delta x goes to zero, which you can see here by the limit of delta x goes to zero. So basically what that means is we need to keep decreasing this gap to make it smaller and smaller. So the points are going to get closer and closer until we're at a single point and we get a line that looks like this. I said a minute ago that the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of a function. In simpler terms, it's just the slope at a specific point. And now you understand the basic intuition of what a derivative is. But quickly, I want to touch on what a derivative can tell us about moving along a graph, because that's gonna be critical for understanding optimization, which we'll talk about in a minute. So let's say we have a graph that looks like this. And at this point, the derivative looks like that. So we can see here that the slope is positive. And what that tells us is that if we move this way in the negative direction, we're going to start getting closer to zero on this graph. And if we move this way in the positive direction, we're gonna just get farther away. Now on the flip side of the graph, if the point's here and we take the slope, we can see that the slope is negative, it's decreasing. And that tells us if we move this way, we're gonna start getting closer to zero. We get lower values on the graph. And if we move this way, we're going to start getting larger numbers on the graph. So you can see how this could be useful if you're trying to find the bottom of a graph. So don't forget this, it's gonna come up when we cover optimization. All right, so now that we know what a derivative is, let's cover what a partial derivative is. So previously, our function may have looked something like this y is equal to f of x, which is equal to x squared. There was only one term, there was only one x value. But now, what happens if there's multiple variables? So let's say our function looks like this. y is equal to f of x naught x1, which is equal to x naught squared plus x1 squared. So let me take this and move that over here. So previously, our graph looked like this. But now, since there's two variables, our graph will look something like this. 
and this creates some sort of cup shape. And then this is Y, and this is X naught, and this is X1, and this is Y, and this is X. So previously for derivatives, there was only one variable. So when we talked about the derivative, it was obvious that we were talking about this, this slope with respect to this variable X. But for this one, when we do a partial derivative, we can take the partial derivative with respect to X naught or the partial derivative to X one. So that would be maybe here for X naught and then X one we can kind of draw back in the background like that. It's basically going along this curve. And what the partial derivative says is what is the rate of change of the function with respect to one of the variables in a multivariable equation. And while the derivative is represented with this notation, dy dx, the partial derivative is represented with this notation, del y del x naught and del y del x1. And now that leads us into talking about gradients. The gradient, which is represented with this upside down triangle, is basically just the list of the partial derivatives. So this is equal to del y, del x naught, and del y, y, del x1. And that's it. That's what a gradient is. The chain rule is essentially when you have a function of a function, like f of g of x. Since this function is kind of complicated, it's difficult to take a derivative. So you need to use the chain rule in order to take the derivative. A neural network is basically a sequence of nodes, something like this, that then pass data into each other. So maybe this is g of x, and this is f of x. And then when the output of this node goes into this function, you get f of g of x. So you can see how neural networks have these complex functions of them, these functions of functions, and why you might need to use the chain rule to take the derivatives of them. Like I said earlier, if you really want to understand the math of how the chain rule works, you should go check out Khan Academy or leave a comment in the sections below for me to make a video. Now let's talk about optimization. Optimization is critical for understanding machine learning. So let's do this. Let's say we have an error function, which means the function outputs how much error we have. So we want to get this error as low as possible. Now, if you remember from earlier when talking about derivatives, I mentioned that derivatives can help us learn which way to move on a graph to figure out which way to go closer to zero. So you can see how this would be critical in understanding how to minimize an error function. And that is essentially what optimization is. It's all about minimizing the error function. So if we look at this graph, we can see that at the very bottom, the slope is zero. So if we take our error function, let's say it's f of x, and then we take the derivative of it, so f prime of x, we can then just set that equal to zero and solve for x. And then that will give us the x, the x value of when the derivative is zero, which thus minimizes our error function. Great, so now you understand the intuition behind some of the most commonly used techniques relating to derivatives. Now, let's go over how derivatives are actually used in machine learning. And there's basically only one place, and it has to do with what we just talked about. The most fundamental use of derivatives in machine learning is in optimization algorithms like gradient descent. Most machine learning algorithms actually learn by solving optimization problems. We just learned that an optimization problem is when you have an error function and you take the derivative of it and set it to zero so that you can minimize the error. Machine learning algorithms have an error function, sometimes called a loss function or a cost function. And then like ChatGPT mentioned, gradient descent is a technique used to minimize the error function. And it involves taking lots of derivatives repeatedly. I'm not going to cover the details of gradient descent in this video, but I will make another one soon. Gradient descent is the most common optimization algorithm. So you should definitely understand it. So 
Places that you see derivatives in machine learning almost always have something to do with optimization. Some other common optimization algorithms are RMSProp and Atom. Some other machine learning techniques related to optimization are backpropagation, regularization, and activation functions. So you may also see derivatives there. You may also hear about a technique called automatic differentiation. It relies heavily on the chain rule and it's used to help train deep neural networks. You'll hear about it when learning about TensorFlow and Python torch which are deep learning libraries if you're trying to become a machine learning engineer like me then in my opinion this might be all that we need to know to break into the field but if you're trying to become a researcher then you may need to know more you're probably going to need to go look at those khan academy videos and probably a lot more resources in order to really understand calculus and how it's used within machine learning and that's basically it not too bad now you know the intuition behind derivatives and how they're used in machine learning now click on this video to learn more machine learning knowledge. And please be sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Let's break into AI together. I'll see you in the next video.